Hello and welcome to another video from Double O Rail. In this video, we're going to show you how you can take professional looking photographs like this of your model railway. So we hope you find this useful. Let's get started. In this video, we're going to show you how to make one of these uh, presentation booths or, or light boxes. Um, basically these are used uh, to kind of take um, high resolution photos and kind of uh, kind of photos with that white backdrop and so on just to kind of focus on what you're trying to present. So in this case I have a, a class uh, K3 locomotive which you may have seen on sites like Hattons and stuff like that. They uh, they take photos and they look real professional because they're kind of zoomed in and on a loco and it's all you basically see. Uh, I believe a couple of other YouTubers uh, do something similar for review videos and uh, just so that it highlights the locomotive that they're trying to review or rolling stock that they're trying to review. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you how to make one of these um, for about a dollar. Uh, yep, that's what I said, uh, for about one US dollar. Um, I'm going to show you how to make this. So first thing I'm going to do is uh, take the loco off of here and the track off of there is just a piece of flex track that I had sitting on there just to show you what it is so basically um, the way this works is if you've got your loco uh, sitting in there if you're using a tablet or a phone or something like that what you do is you would basically tap uh, on the image of the loco and what that will do is it'll actually focus on the loco and change the white balance in the background automatically for you so basically the background will kind of kind of lose focus and just look like it's kind of white haze and it'll show out all the details of the loco. So it's actually a pretty good way to do it. If you're using a camera, uh, such as this uh, Nikon Coolpix um, B500, um, you'll actually have to adjust the white balance down a little bit uh, so that this, because um, it won't do it automatically, it's, uh, it's an actual camera. Um, but basically, it's, it's pretty straightforward. So let me... Uh, show you how to do this. Uh, so what I did uh, was uh, basically we just have uh, a couple of offshoots on the back here uh, to create this sort of half V or lopsided V shape with the base on it and this is actually wedged up uh, inside um, the bend here uh, just to add support. So it adds a little bit of extra support, keeps it upright, stops it from uh, falling in on itself. Um, to actually build this, uh, what I used was a very simple uh, sheet of foam board and uh, it was the only thing I had to buy. And so uh, here you can see it's uh, I believe uh, two foot by, by three foot was the piece that I bought. Um, it's not very big, cost 88 cents at uh, Walmart and maybe if I move this out of the way you'll be able to see it. Yeah the camera on a kind of narrow uh, view angle but you can sort of see uh, that's basically it just a fairly narrow sheet of uh, foam board and like I said it cost 88 cents in Walmart and uh, what I did was uh, just measured back about uh, about a foot and uh, cut it and then what I did was I took that piece out which is the bit that's sitting on top of here and then um, the other part that's about two-thirds of it left I uh, folded it over, um, just scored it on the back side, and then sort of just pulled this forward. So just uh, scored it down, about a foot in, and then bent it over, and uh, I got this shape. And of course, you have this sort of L shape going on here with the gap underneath. Uh, I took some of the offshoots that I had and just cut them up into small panels. Um, use PVA glue to glue this to the underside. You can just wedge it in underneath and then I actually use the PVA glue bottle to keep it upright. And I PVA glued uh, this into a V-shape. If you're wondering why this is a V-shape, uh, basically it's just there to give it some support. It kind of gives it an upright T and then this bit uh, sticks off to the side just to give it a bit of extra support. And again, I use PVA glue up, down, along the sides and to create the board. And then what I did was the original piece that was about a foot wide by two feet long that I had uh, cut off. I uh, PVA glued it to the top. <coughs> um, the reason I did that was just to kind of hide the score mark and uh, hide the bend. Um, 
from showing up on the camera, although it doesn't really show up, so you may not need to really do that step. It also adds a bit of um, depth to it as well. So, um, what we'll do next is just uh, put the loco back on it, and what we'll do is we'll take some pictures and I'll uh, show you the photos on the uh, in the video I'll edit it in. But um, basically, that's all uh, this was. It was just a quick how to video. Uh, show you how to create one of these uh, white light box uh, type setups and like for less than a dollar it's uh, pretty straightforward now you can use these for um, thumbnails so if you're doing like a looker review or something like that uh, you might get it at a, a good angle and then um, take a zoomed in shot or take a angled shot and so it's just focused on the loco and that might give you a little bit better um, traction with your YouTube videos and stuff like that because and it'll give you a more slightly more catchy thumbnail that people might be more inclined to click on because it's kind of um, made the locomotive's uh, kind of attributes and sort of just detail kind of pop a little more than if it was just a picture of it sitting on your kind of dark layout. Now one other thing that's real important is lighting. Uh, one of the things I did uh, here at the double rail uh, layout is I actually upgraded uh, all the lighting in here as uh, so you can see it's much brighter uh, than it normally is. And so um, that's a key part. Uh, if you get the lighting right or even have spot lighting on this, it'll uh, give you the opportunity to uh, kind of make the loco uh, stand out. You won't have any these shadows and stuff uh, going on. Also, uh, you know, messing with the white balance and if you're using a tablet or a phone or something like that, just clicking on it will actually bring those details out because it'll actually cause, like I said, the, uh, the backdrop to sort of blend in and be this kind of bright white background. All right. So Okay, so uh, there's a number of reasons why you might want to take a professional photograph of your uh, Malvo rolling stock. Uh, for example, uh, you might want to use it for YouTube thumbnails. Uh, you want to want to focus just on the locomotive itself and have that white background that's sort of out of focus uh, just so that the focus is on the uh, locomotive itself. Uh, you may have seen these on product photography uh, such as over at Hatton's website, they use it quite a lot. And basically the idea is that you want to um, focus on the product and just show the product um, or the piece of rolling stock. So you might be doing a review video, you might be doing a product video, maybe you've customized something, uh, you might be wanting to showcase your weathering services or weathering skills. Um, so whatever you're trying to uh, showcase, you really want to put the focus on the uh, object itself. And so the way that's typically achieved is with what's called a light box. And light boxes you can buy on Amazon. They're relatively cheap. They range in anywhere from about $14, uh, $15 for what's called a light tent, which is basically a small uh, kind of cubicle uh, type tent where you put the object in and it's kind of got a white balance around the outside. Um, two more, you know, professional-looking light boxes that can cost you a couple hundred dollars. So um, what we decided to do well, was try to build one ourselves, um, basically using some foam board and some glue, uh, just to see if we could get the same effect um, for just a couple of dollars. So we used a sheet of foam board, which I think cost us maybe a dollar fifty uh, from Walmart, and you can get foam board from pretty much anywhere. You could also use cardboard uh, if you wanted to. Um, I used the foam board uh, just because it was a little bit thicker and um, had a kind of slightly better texture to it than what was at uh, Walmart. Uh, some of the uh, cardboard, you could had a gray backing or a black backing and you could sort of see that through um, the photos and so on. Okay, so we're gonna show you uh, an example of how um, we typically will use the light box. Uh, so we have our uh, 1300 lumen um, LED, uh, which is just above here, and we'll show you that in a minute. Um, but we're going to show you basically how we're going to photograph this uh, HST and then show you the photos that um, were produced from it. So uh, first of all, we're using this uh, Nikon Coolpix. Uh, you could possibly use just a regular camera or your phone. Um, I found that the uh, typically you want to use a camera, uh, you get a little bit better results. But if you've got a good um, you know, focus on your phone, it may work um, pretty well. I have not I have a Pixel 2 and it, it kind of worked okay, but uh, I got much better results. Um, with the Nikon, so that's what we're going to go with. Um, so first of all, what you want to do is uh, try to get the camera as close as you can. You only want the uh, white in the background and you sort of want to arrange it so that it's focused just on the part of the locomotive you're aiming for. So right now we're aiming for this uh, front part of the locomotive 
and then we're going to just take the picture and what it's done is it's basically gone and taken the background and made it kind of a little out of focus so it kind of blends in and kind of puts all the focus on the locomotive um, now I'm going to go and do the same thing with the inner city 125 and I'm going to let it focus on the inner city 125 and then take the picture and we'll show you the result and then we can also do it from higher angles so this one I'm going to focus on the loco and if you look at this uh, resulting picture now um, you'll see that it basically blended it out the line it's out of focus so you can't really see it um, and it, it turns out pretty well and maybe we want to take a look at some of the roof detail um, so I'm trying to get my camera out of the um, out of the light there a little bit and take a picture there and you can see um, you just have to be careful with the angles sometimes you might have to stand up so you're not um, creating shadows you don't want to create okay so we'll uh, you can do a couple other things so you can uh, We'll rotate the loco around. Maybe we want to get um, the running number here with the um, tab doors. Um, maybe we want to get a closer look at the undercarriage here. And maybe tilt it at an angle like so. And get some pictures. Head on. You basically see here I'm putting the camera really close um, to the loco, and that's deliberate. We want to. Uh, you can use your imagination too with uh, the angles and photos that you want to take. Um, but yeah, so uh, we'll show you the photos I just took, and uh, you can see, uh, you know, it, it produces pretty good results, and it's not bad for less than two dollars. Um, basically cut it out, glued it as you saw, and it's been um, put into this uh, shelving unit here. So what we're going to do next is we're going to show you um, how we put together the shelving unit because uh, it came from Ikea, so you should be able to buy it in the UK um, pretty easily or anywhere in the world. Um, and I'll put the Ikea information on there as well. Um, and hopefully uh, you'll find that useful. Okay, so I've zoomed out the... Uh lens here so you can take a kind of a closer look at how it's uh, put together uh, you'll have to excuse the mess in the background there um, but basically you got your two pieces of foam and it's just been uh, basically cut and scored and then this has been glued on top to give you the angle it does create a bit of a shadow um, right along here just where the join is um, you could mask that out I mean I could get some white uh, masking tape or I could possibly um, you know, paint it. Uh, but to be honest, uh, once you get the focus right on the camera, it, it really doesn't um, cause you any problems. Now, one thing I am I will be doing uh, to upgrade this is I do need to put um, some white balance on the side, right? So we need something uh, here and on this side uh, to basically completely, um, you know, enclose it. And uh, I can use some more foam board, which I might glue on the side. And I'm also going to test out um, using possibly a curtain, so I can just. Uh, wrap the back here with a curtain and drape it and uh, or not curtain but like a pillowcase or a sheet or something uh, to, to kind of give you the overall look uh, you could also mask this um, with a, a pillowcase or a sheet as well you could like hang it up here and just have it draped down and you'll get a similar effect um, so there's a couple of different options uh, but this is just the base of it to get started and uh, as you can see uh, just doing that turned out pretty well so uh, what I'm going to do next is I have this Oxford Rail Hatton's uh, special edition, I believe it's a ICAI um, hopper wagon. So uh, we're going to show you uh, just a showcase way of uh, possibly taking product photos of this and uh, just give you an idea of how it might be used. Uh, you already saw the ones with the HST, uh, but this is kind of an end to end showing you like the box and, and so on. Alright, so you have to excuse the mess in the background. It's still a basement, still used under the layout here uh, for storage. At some point I will clean that out and put some display cases in, but for now it's just storing stuff that we don't know what to do with when the kids are younger and so on. 
Um, anyway, so I wanted to show you um, exactly how we made the uh, the kind of rest of the uh, light box. Um, so here you can see where you've got some uh, plastic brackets. These are these cheap ones. Um, I think they're like 50 cents or something like that, 25 cents at IKEA. They're, um, I'll put the IKEA number in the in the description. And then you, they come with the um, you buy the shelving part separately, and you can kind of just mix and match it. I think they come in a variety of different colors. Um, I got the black ones because actually we're going to use them for something else. And then I got the idea of mounting this here for the light box. Um, the light itself is a under the cabinet uh, kitchen light. Uh, you can see there, and it's uh, pretty bright. Um, this costs ten dollars at Walmart. Uh, you can see here it plugs in, and I can um, turn it off, and then uh, turn it on. You can see it makes uh, quite a difference there with the effect that we're going for. Um, like I said, this costs ten dollars. It has two clips: uh, one that screws in here, and one that screws in on the other side. I lined them up um, with the uh, shelving bracket and just put them about a millimeter or so away from the end of it so that there was room for it to expand. Um, you shimmy it in and you basically just clip it in place and it stays here, this thing's uh, not going anywhere. And so this is how we constructed that and then I did the same thing on the bottom part and, and then just uh, kind of taped the uh, foam board to this to give you the um, give you the, the unit size. Now this part I had already built and so what I did was I lined this up and then factored in the uh, shelving height on the bottom so that these would rest uh, perfectly and kind of clip in with the um, with the brackets from the above part. Um, I think like I said earlier in the video hopefully I said earlier in the video I'm going to go and uh, put a kind of like a sheet or curtain or pillowcase or something in behind this so you get the enclosed um, look for it as well. Um, but I just wanted to show you guys um, how we put that together to finish the, uh, the light box. Alright, so in, for this part of the video, I've actually left it uh, zoomed in. And the reason I've left it, uh, or sorry, zoomed out. And the reason I've left it zoomed out is just so that you can see, um, you know, exactly how we do this. Um, and then the end result as well. So the first thing I'm going to take a picture of is just the end of the box here. Uh, just so that, you know, folks can get an idea of uh, some of the stuff that you might be able to use. So if you're doing a review video, uh, you know, you might want to show how it's packaged. Um, now, this has kind of got a shiny front on the end of it, so uh, you want to make sure that you don't catch anything in the background that you don't want to, uh, you know, photographed, um, you know, your face or, you know, something in the background that, you know, you just don't want it. Um, you know, so for example, if I take a picture like this, uh, it's going to produce the camera in my hand and so on. So. Instead, if I put it off at this angle and move the camera around a little bit, I can actually get a much better picture without having to, um, you know, get the reflection in the in the way. All right. So the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to actually open this. So we'll go ahead and open it. And I guess uh, this is brand new. I've got a couple of these. Uh, and what are the ones I opened? Uh, they turned out pretty nice. And uh, I think maybe get some of those Hatton's uh, cool loads or uh, different loads that you can uh, put into this. So, usual um, casing like this. And, uh, you know, just for giggles here, we'll go and uh, take some pictures of the thing. This is pretty dark, uh, so it'll be interesting to see if it picks up um, the features or not in the photos. And next thing I'm going to do is uh, just remove it. And now it's all set to take some uh, product photos. So I go and put the camera on it, make sure it's focused on the wagon. And then we'll take uh, some photos at different angles, and then we'll show you the end result. Uh, maybe we want to do a top down photo and uh, you can always do it uh, like this as well right so and maybe you want to do some from an angle get some of the other detail and when you're pushing the button on the camera you basically want to make sure you've got the camera orientated so that when it focuses it focuses on the object and kind of blurs out the background um, I'll flick it around and take some
some more photos of it this way. And usually it's a matter of just getting the angle right. Like so. And we'll show you those photos next. And then finally what we're going to do is just put it on a piece of rail. And you'll see that in a minute. Alright, so I've uh, put the wagon here on a uh, piece of track. And we're just going to take uh, some more photos of it. And we'll show you the end results on there. I'm not quite sure if I can get, I might be able to get where you can see, there you go, on the actual, it's a little tricky to have the hand-eye coordination. Uh, there you go. So you can see there when I uh, push the button on the camera, I want it to focus on the object. Maybe I want to get a little closer to the ICI. Some real close-ups of the detail there. It's actually a really good wagon, by the way. Um, like so, all right. So we'll uh, show you those pictures inside the video as well, so you can uh, take a closer look. In fact, uh, we'll just do a slideshow now, so you can see all of them, and you'll get a good idea of um, how this works. So hopefully, um, you guys get some ideas with this. Uh, it's relatively cheap to put together. Like I said, want to uh, put some stuff on the side there. Uh, but generally, uh, you can use this to create thumbnails, so maybe you want, you're doing a review video, or you're doing a video on a particular, you know, meet the fleet or something like that. Um, this is a good way to create the, the thumbnail. So you create the thumbnail um, by focusing on the object in the picture, you load that into your uh, photo software. If you don't have photo software, uh, you can use open source, uh, like the GIMP. I believe the GIMP works on Mac, Windows, and Linux, and it's a good um, kind of Photoshop style application that you can use, and of course it's free. Um, and so within that you can go and you can take the photo, cut it, crop it how you want, uh, do some editing on it, and basically go ahead and put the text overlay that you might want on it, and maybe we'll do like ICI wagon overlay. In fact, what I'll do is for this video, I'll actually use the pictures I just took of the um, ICI wagon and show you guys um, how to, you know, how the thumbnail would turn out. Um, typically you, you put um, something on the thumbnail uh, these days on YouTube so that folks uh, who won't even read the description, right, they just see the, the thumbnail and a little bit of text on it gives them an idea of what the video is about. Alright, so um, that's it for this video. I uh, hope you found it interesting. Um, like I said, this is part of a new series uh, called uh, Sharing Your Layout. Uh, and we're showing you guys all the uh, behind the scenes secrets uh, so that you can uh, share your layout and your experience on YouTube. Um, there's a couple of really good communities, um, I'll put them in the description as well, uh, where you can share your layout as well and kind of get a couple of subscribers and so on. But basically, I uh, shouldn't procrastinate, uh, just go ahead and do it, create the channel today, and then go ahead and uh, upload your videos to it when you get a chance. When we started the uh, Doubler Rail channel, I believe um, I created the channel on November 23rd, 2011, and then uh, we didn't upload anything until like December 16th. So. Create the channel, have a go, and uh, if you have something to share, uh, please put it in the comments below. If you actually create a channel because you watch this video, uh, go and put the uh, the link in the comments and hopefully you get some more subscribers. Alright, so that's it for today. I hope you guys enjoyed the video, and until next time.